Let's start this further session. Sectarianism, ISIS, and counter-revolution. So dealing with some very highly charged issues. We have two speakers who will speak for 20 minutes each. Uh, the first you've met already in the first in the plenary session, Sam Nagy of the Egyptian Revolutionary Socialists, a very long time activist in Egypt. And our second speaker will be Joseph Daher. He's uh, just submitted his PhD here at SOAS yesterday, he tells me. So. <laughs> So, Mabruk to Joseph. Um, Joseph's um, a Syrian activist. He's the founder of the blog Syrian, Syria Freedom Forever. Okay, so first of all, Seme. Okay, uh, for those of you who know a little about Egypt, Egypt has uh, around 90 million people now. Uh, between 10 and 15 percent of these people are Christians, are Coptic uh, Orthodox uh, Christians, and it's the main uh, religious minority in Egypt. There are other minorities, there are uh, Baha'is, there are Shiites, uh, there are Jews, uh, but much smaller uh, groups of people, uh, uh, much less than 0.1 percent in, in, in most cases. So the, the main kind of religious minority in, in Egypt, or division in Egypt, is between a majority Sunni uh, Muslim population and a minority Christian, Orthodox Christian, Coptic uh, uh, community. Uh, now, <coughs> historically, the Coptic community uh, has seen different periods throughout its history. I mean, since Islam entered uh, Egypt, uh, there have been periods of when there was discrimination. There, been there have been periods of sectarian violence, sectarian uh, uh, problems. Um, but in the modern era, in, in the last uh, uh, few decades, uh, things have developed in a completely different, new way with the development of capitalism, and particularly with the development of new liberalism in, in the past uh, uh, in the past uh, few decades. Uh, one of the main kind of features of capitalist development in a country like Egypt <coughs> is urbanization, is the move from uh, the, the rural areas to the, the cities. Uh, in Egypt, this involved the move of millions of people from the south and from rural regions to the main cities, particularly Cairo and Alexandria. Uh, this move obviously involved both Christians from the minority uh, and uh, Muslims from the uh, uh, majority. Now, with neoliberalism, what happened is that the state stopped providing services to the majority of people living in slum areas in the, urban, uh, in the big urban centers to which people had moved from rural uh, uh, areas. Uh, health services, education, and so on, all these neoliberal austerity measures were taken uh, away, and so the only providers of these services started to become either the mosque uh, or the church. The mosque providing for the Muslims, obviously, the church providing for the Christians. So uh, this started creating a segregation uh, uh, between the two uh, communities. Uh, the more neo neoliberalism became rapid, and especially in the last 10 years of Mubarak's uh, uh, rule, uh, the more this became a, a, a severe kind of uh, aspect of life for the majority of poor people in, in Egypt. The poor Christians had to go to the church for educational facilities, for health facilities, for financial help, for blankets in winter, for everything they needed on a daily basis. Uh, and the Muslims went to the mosque because the state had stopped providing all these, uh, all these things. Uh, this created a, a space in which sectarianism grew very uh, uh, rapidly. The way that uh, Mubarak dealt with the sectarianism was to deal with the heads of uh, the different sects. So he would deal with the head of the Christian Coptic Church uh, to control his people, to control the people of uh, the Christian uh, 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 poor. And he would uh, deal with Al-Azhar and to an extent the Muslim Brotherhood to deal with the uh, Muslim uh, uh, populations. 
Now, all this exploded with the revolution. Suddenly, you had Christian poor uh, people with Muslim poor people, uh, Christians leaving the church uh, uh, grounds, Christian uh, 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 in, a, in a state of kind of mutiny against the church hierarchy, uh, going out in revolt with uh, uh, the Muslims. And the early days of the revolution it was a main feature uh, uh, of the big demonstrations, of the big occupations, was that Christians were a central aspect of what was happening. Uh, this meant that the movement took a secular democratic, uh, 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 or had a secular uh, democratic aspect to it, uh, that made it impossible for Islamists, for example, to, to, to try to kind of separate between the two uh, uh, communities. Now, uh, this being a central aspect of the, the revolution uh, did not just simply mean that Christians as citizens participated. It meant that Christians as a, 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 an oppressed minority started having their own demonstrations against particular things that were taking place against them. For example, churches being burnt or, or uh, different forms of oppression. They started having massive demonstrations, tens of thousands of people in central Cairo, towards, uh, moving towards the main, uh, uh, mainly the, the, what they used as a symbolic kind of target was this television, uh, uh, the main television building in central, uh, in central Cairo. This was a serious problem, both for the church hierarchy and for the Muslim Brotherhood and for the army uh, uh, leadership. Uh, the, the Christian movement, the Christian mass movement uh, during the revolution uh, developed during the <coughs> rule of SCAF, during the rule of the military uh, council, uh, Supreme Council of Armed Forces in, in, in Egypt, which included uh, El Sisi uh, at, at that time. The way they dealt with this was extreme violence. They, they uh, attacked these uh, demonstrators, they uh, killed uh, scores of demonstrators, uh, and they even had a statement on television by uh, one of the military generals saying that the army is under attack from the Christian uh, community, uh, calling on Muslims to go out uh, to protect the army from the Christians that were uh, attacking them. Uh, so it was a, a clear policy, sectarian uh, policy. So any talk about al Sisi and the army being somehow secular in the face of uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood or in the face of Islamists uh, is, is, uh, has no basis uh, at all. Uh, the Egyptian state, the Egyptian capital state, is a state based on sectarianism. It's a state based on this uh, uh, division. It's a state based on the kind of uh, what they call a new millet uh, system, and, and, uh, you know, a, a renewal of the old Ottoman system, where each community uh, is under the control of its religious figures and main religious hierarchy, uh, and they keep. So the president uh, would deal with Christians through the Coptic Pope. So if there's a problem, if there are uh, uh, clashes or whatever, they deal with them through the Coptic Pope. This hierarchical system between the states and the church leadership and the Christian poor broke down with the revolution, broke down completely with the, with the revolution. And one of the aims of the army in the first period of their, uh, when they ruled, when Scaf ruled, and uh, w much clearer so since the counter-revolution, since the coup, uh, is to return to that old uh, uh, system. Uh, that is why El Sisi, uh, in nearly all of his speeches, mentions the Copts and talks about the, the army protecting the rights of Copts and talks about the Islamists being a threat to national unity in Egypt between Copts and, and Muslims. Uh, that's why Sisi comes out in, in, in the main, for example, speech of the, of the coup when he announced that okay, uh, it's, it's, it's over, Morsi is, uh, is uh, in jail. Uh, he was uh, in the main video of, uh, that, that they showed. Next to him was the Pope supporting the coup uh, directly uh, in, a, in a kind of signal that the army protects the, the, the Copts, as long as they remain within the framework of the church, as long as they remain inside the, 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 the borders of the, the church, as long as they stop going to Tahrir Square, as long as they, you make sure that they don't appear again in the political uh, uh, scene. So you have something that was central to the revolution, an anti-sectarian, <coughs> secular 
uh, side of the Egyptian revolution. Uh, and obviously the other side of that was the participation of women. Again, that's another uh, 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 story. But that picture uh, needed to be kind of uh, uh, destroyed by the, 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 coup, uh, the coup leaders. Uh, and now you have a situation in which the Muslim Brotherhood, on the one hand, are saying that this coup has been uh, supported by the Christians. This shows that our Islamism is right. This, sh this shows that our position on the Christians is right. Uh, we need to be uh, careful of uh, the, the Copts. And the army saying that they're protecting the Copts, they're protecting the minority. And so this minority becomes a main political ally uh, uh, with the, the army. And the argument is simple. And, and Sisi comes out and says this openly. Do you want to be like Syria? And we will come to this now. Do, do you want to be like the Christians in Syria? Look at what's happening to the Christians in Syria. In Iraq, there are no more. Most Christians have, have either left or have been uh, killed. Do you want to be like this? Do you want Daesh? Uh, uh, the <coughs> argument is that the Muslim Brotherhood, Islamism, is Daesh. Uh, that the Muslim Brotherhood, and each time Daesh, of course, do one of their amazing, <laughs> weird uh, uh, executions, uh, the Egyptian state and the Egyptian army uses this and says, this would have happened to you if we hadn't destroyed the Muslim Brotherhood. And actually, by tying the Muslim Brotherhood to the revolution, if the revolution had continued, the revolution had to stop, people had to go home, the army had to be in charge. If the revolution continues, you'll only get more Islamism, you'll only get more chaos, you'll only get more Syria and more Iraq and more Libya. Uh, uh, the army has protected you all from this uh, uh, horrible uh, uh, future. And this is actually how they continue to uh, maintain support for uh, the coup. Uh, the coup, yes, it's not. And they uh, openly say, yes, we're not particularly democratic right now. We, uh, there's a, we have a serious security problem. There is terrorism. There's a terrorist threat. Uh, uh, um, and the only way uh, we can face this threat is through letting the army do its, uh, its, its job. Therefore, not only are the Muslim Brotherhood Daesh, anybody who stands against the army, anybody who tries to say, we want democratic rights, we want workers' rights, uh, is Daesh, is Muslim Brotherhood, is against the unity of the country, is trying to destroy the country, is trying to destroy uh, unity between Christians and Muslims, uh, uh, is some kind of agent of some kind. It, it couldn't be a kind of uh, norm. You can't, if you, you want to make a strike now, and we have this war against terror, we have this war against uh, extreme uh, Islamists, we have this war against those fascists uh, that are threatening our, our country, uh, then you're helping them, you're aiding them with your strike. Uh, if you want a demonstration in, in the university, then you're aiding the terrorists. And this, they've used this to, to, to build up a frenzy, uh, uh, a middle class frenzy, that includes regretfully, a large part of the Coptic minority that were really scared of, the, and, and they had every right to be scared of uh, Islamism. They look at Islamism in the region, uh, and they see one Christian uh, mi minority uh, group after the other being either churches burnt, houses burnt down, uh, uh, <coughs> executed in terrible ways, <coughs> having to leave uh, 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 the country. So the argument was extremely powerful in pushing uh, large numbers of Christians to support the military uh, 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 coup. W with the question of women, it was slightly uh, 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 different. Uh, I won't go into that, it's a different uh, story. But <coughs> one thing that one learns from the, these developments is that the question of oppression is central to the revolution. It's central both to the revolution and to the counter-revolution. The revolution would not uh, and this is something we need to learn for the future in preparing for the next uh, revolution. If you don't have as a central plank of any revolutionary strategy the question of oppression, of women's oppression, of the oppression of minorities, uh, at the very center of uh, the revolutionary program, at the very center of the revolutionary program, if you lose the chance to win these people over, these oppressed minorities over, uh, uh, then they will be used against the revolution then that same issue, that same uh, issue, will be used against uh, the, the, the revolution. The problem is that there's this confusion, and this is particularly in the left, uh, large sections of the left, again, fell into this trap. 
Sisi might be a dictator, but he supports the unity between Christians and Muslims. He supports the Christian minority. He supports women's uh, rights against these crazy uh, uh, Islamists. Therefore, we as leftists should support a Sisi. Uh, so you get this horrible picture of well-known leftists uh, uh, with a long history, and not only leftist organizers or, or actors. I'm talking about poets, about uh, uh, important film directors, uh, about novelists, about main figures that people, ordinary people, associate with the left, associate from their history with the left, coming out on television saying we're all for uh, the, uh, the, the coup, we're all for uh, Sisi, uh, Sisi is protecting us, it's protecting Egypt from terrorism, uh, Sisi is protection, protecting Egypt from collapse, from chaos, from being uh, 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 cut into pieces uh, into a Muslim uh, side and a, and a Christian side. He might be a dictator, uh, uh, but he's a kind of uh, um, uh, a secular dictator. A secular dictator is better than a religious uh, 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 dictator. Uh, so the question of minorities, the question of the, Christ the, the sectarianism, whether in Egypt or, as we've seen in Syria and, and, and in other uh, uh, places in the Arab world, has been central in both, uh, uh, in, in both the rise of the revolutions and in this uh, moment of uh, counter-revolution and will be central in the next stages of uh, the revolution in preparing for the next uh, uh, revolutions. Uh, nothing could be, I mean, in, in Lenin's words, the, the revolution is a festival of the oppressed and in the case of the Egyptian revolution, nothing could have been clearer. This was a festival of the of oppressed. This was Christians, Muslims, men and women, uh, 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 the Nubian minority, the people of Sinai, everybody on the streets uh, uh, in this, uh, uh, against their oppression, and at the same time understanding that the unity of these oppressed, different oppressed groups uh, uh, was central to winning uh, the revolution. The problem is that revolutionary forces, the, the political groups, uh, of uh, uh, revolutionary political groups were not able to kind of seize the moment, uh, we're not big enough, we're not influential enough politically to seize the, that moment in which that, that kind of unity uh, took place. And, and therefore, we lost the first round uh, to the counter-revolution. <coughs> and so in preparation for the second revolution, uh, I think in the case of Egypt, the Coptic question and the women's question need to be at the very center uh, of, uh, uh, of any uh, uh, revolutionary program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. uh, thank you, first of all, for the organizer for this conference. It's, it's a great opportunity to speak here, to, to, to think uh, all together about these issues about sectarianism. I will divide my presentation into three parts as. Uh, it's a large subject. We have uh, sectarianism, after we'll treat about Daesh, uh, so-called Islamic State, and to come back about counter-revolutions in general. But in, in the first place, I think, as an intro, but also as a, it's always difficult to speak about sectarianism, and also because we've spoken a lot about um, Islamic fundamentalism, or Islamist in a European context. Uh, by therefore, I mean, um, in a, in a context that is uh, very much uh, influenced by Orientalism and racism against Muslim community in Europe. So it's very difficult uh, to, to, to have a, a harsh criticism, I mean, uh, of the Islamic fundamentalism without falling into the, the other uh, strand. So just I will explain that, um, for example, and this is how I will frame my, my presentation, we have to fight against Orientalism and racism, against uh, I mean, uh, fight against Islamophobia, and just as I'll show that Daesh cannot be understood through reading the Quran or going back to Islamic history, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, as we try to explain Charlie Hebdo, Charlie's assassination, and others by seeing, if, if trying to find the reasons in the religion doesn't make any kind of sense. It's a form of essentialism and Orientalism and racism. <laughs> Uh, and in the same time, uh, I think it's also a duty to be careful not to fall into Orientalism in reverse. Uh, which I mean is to say that Islam is the popular culture of the people of the Middle East and North Africa. 
uh, and to believe that any kind of Muslim believer is therefore an Islamist. This is also a complete, uh, uh, it's completely wrong. You have, uh, but for example, we often hear uh, media say you had the liberals, uh, the left, and the Muslims. But the liberals and the left are also Muslims. Uh, when you come to the Middle East and North Africa, you have many people that are believers that are not in uh, Islamic fundamentalist uh, uh, political groups. Though in the same time, fight Orientalism and as well Orientalism in reverse, uh, that has been a problem on many perspectives uh, of the left. So now I can start talking about sectarianism. Sectarianism uh, has been believed as something that uh, uh, has existed throughout history in the Middle East and North Africa, and that, you know, if you have uh, hatred between Sunni and Shias, it's because a thousand years ago they had a dispute, and therefore what you have in Iraq and Lebanon is the consequences of this. So Bahrain, the same. Uh, in many aspects, you know, uh, people saying that the problem between Christians and Muslims in Egypt as well is due to 2,000 years ago. Well, not that perfectly. It's not into modern uh, political uh, and socio-economic reasons. And when it comes to Middle East and North Africa, very often, the normal social tools, economic tools, analysis that you use for the whole over the world, but more especially, I would say, uh, white Europe, you don't, you don't use it for other regions of the world. So you fall into essentializing this kind of con uh, community, which is, is a problem. So therefore, sectarianism has been considered as a, a reminiscent of past history preventing the modernization of these countries, or as something that is essential to the people of the region. Uh, of course, I disagree strongly with this uh, interpretation, and I believe it's a, it's a product of modernity. doesn't mean that there wasn't any kind of religious discrimination before, but the way you understand sectarianism today, it's through uh, understanding that it's a, a product of modernity. And there are two authors that spoke very well of this understanding of sectarianism as a product of modernity, uh, is Mehdi Amel, who was a communist uh, a member of the Le a Lebanese uh, communist member uh, in Lebanon that was actually called most uh, probably in the 80s by Hezbollah, uh, who, be, uh, who wrote this book about uh, in the sectarian state. And he explains how sectarianism plays a role in facilitating, facilitating patterns of class power within Middle East society. Uh, and the other very good author, and I, I can't expand too much, I'm sorry, on the different points because I have to go quite fast. Uh, and the other author that has been uh, very good is Usama Maqdasi, a Lebanese-Palestinian scholar that also has written about the culture of sectarianism in Lebanon to explain that the sectarian, I mean, the sectarian political system in Lebanon is intrinsically linked to the bourgeois rule and uh, through capitalist intervention in the 19th century, etc. Uh, and this is very important to understand that because even sections of the left viewed, uh, especially in Lebanon uh, and also elsewhere, uh, sectarianism as a product of the past and only through modernization and through uh, a, a kind of um, coalition with uh, national bourgeoisie, nationalist, we could go over, through, over it through nationalist uh, identity. Uh, and they thought that sectarianism was due to past reason, which was completely wrong. And uh, sectarianism has mostly been used by authoritarian regimes uh, in the region, not necessarily actually, and as Sameh explained very well, they don't need to be sectarian to use sectarianism. Uh, meaning that, uh, for example, the Syrian regime, a lot of people, and this, again, this essentialist perspective of the analysis of the Syrian <coughs> revolution, to see it as a Sunni uprising uh, from the Western media, but also helped from the, the counter-revolutionary uh, monarchies of the Gulf, uh, that since the beginning portrayed the revolution in Syria as a Sunni uprising against the Alawite uh, regime. This is not an Alawite regime, it's a regime uh, that is built on different um, uh, bases of power. Nevertheless, it does uh, have a strong uh, component of Alawite uh, in the military and the security services, but it's based on the, also on the Sunni and Christian bourgeoisie of Damas uh, Damascus and uh, Aleppo. Um, and I will explain very shortly uh, how we can see the sectarianism used by authoritarian regime, whether being 
um, so-called secular, which they are not at all, as the Sisi regime is not at all the uh, secular, nor, neither does Assad regime is secular at all. Uh, or by other mo monarchies like Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, I use sectarianism to crush popular movement. We haven't spoken about the, the Qatif uh, movement in Saudi Arabia that was a strong movement that wanted to make links inside of Saudi Arabia in the beginning of 2011 because you had the popular movement inside Saudi universities, etc. The way to, to divide this movement was to say Qatif, which is majority Shia, uh, these people are supported by Iran. Uh, and you had Egypt, Christian and Sunnis, division, etc. In the case of Assad, so it's a, it's a bourgeois, clientelist, uh, military uh, uh, regime that has used sectarianism and even Arab chauvinism to divide people. Uh, even, t I mean, uh, I will say tribal links to divide the, 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 the people. It based on uh, its sectarianism, if you want, with, especially with the arrival of Assad in 1970. Uh, which represented the end of a kind of a radical period of the Ba'as between 63 and 70. Um, so it was bringing back the, the Sunni bourgeoisie, Sunni conservative layers of the society back into the state. It was trying to make the Alawi community, community sorry, as an, a community completely linked to the, to the regime of Assad. It, it wasn't able to do it. And it, it's wrong as well to ascribe uh, um, a kind of class community analysis that was being a mistake, for example, of sections of the left in Lebanon during the civil war, saying, for example, during the civil uh, Lib uh, Lebanese war, some section of the left, the nationalists, said that Christians are the bourgeoisie, middle class is Sunni, and uh, the popular classes are Shia. And in some cases in Syria, there has been this analysis of the Sunni, the oppressed, and the Alawite, the, the dominating, uh, where you see that the second most impoverished region of Syria was where uh, the Alawite mountain, actually. And the first one was the Kurdish majority region of Jazeera. Uh, so, um, and I, I can expand after. Also, it used, as I said, sh Arab chauvinism against the Kurds through process of colonization, etc. It's also uh, used... Um, a way um, of Islamization from a Khomeini's perspective of the small community of Shia inside of Syria. So you had Iranian Institute from the Islamic Republic of Iran growing humongously inside of Syria, especially under Bashar Assad's uh, power and even before. So a process uh, equally that was not pr present inside of Syria, new uh, habits came that came directly from the Islamic Republic of Iran. Actually, you see absolutely the same with Hezbollah in, uh, in Lebanon. New habits came uh, directly from the Islamic Republic of Iran. And even in the beginning of the revolution, there was an attempt to separate Syrians and Palestinians, saying that the Palestinians were the ones that were making problems at the beginning of the Syrian revolution, that they were the ones to bring sectarianism, etc., problems in Syria. It says, I can't expand too much on Syria because I have to go back now to Daesh, which is a whole case as well, Islam, so-called Islamic State. And also it would be understand to, uh, uh, important to understand that the Islamic State was, uh, the link with Syria is the following. The Islamic State that was nearly on the verge of falling in 2010, 2011, through, uh, that I will explain later, the component of the Syrian revolution enabled him to, uh, to, to accumulate uh, military experience, to, to accumulate um, uh, economic resources into, to, into entering a lot of different businesses. And the Assad regime actually, uh, while it was saying it was a Sunni Islamic fundamentalist uprising, during the for her first two years, and until now, but especially in the first two years, crushing constantly the democratic uh, activist, secular activist of the Syrian revolution that was at the beginning of this revolution while after three months at the beginning of the revolution after three months he liberated all the different uh, Salafist Islamic reactionary uh, personalities and group from prisons you have different uh, people that can speak about it and actually the, the whole majority of the leadership of the different Islamic fundamentalist uh, uh, battalions, military battalions in Syria were in Sidnaya prison in the beginning of the revolution. 
while FSA forces, while democratic activists have been targeted uh, constantly. And this was this allowed notably Daesh, an Islamic state, to expand in Syria. And after they had a problem with uh, Al-Qaeda that some now consider moderate because on the left of Islamic State, which is... <laughs> okay. Uh, we can't understand as well the so-called Islamic State uh, without coming back to the history of Iraq. Uh, and there are a couple of different reasons. Uh, to this uh, the Islamic State, as I said before, it's completely wrong. If you can check out the Quran, the different Islamic stories, you can check out for 100 years, you won't find a reason, as some essentialist and racist people are trying to do. Uh, but you can find it notably through Western imperialism. <laughs> uh, but first of all, the first reason, if you check out the, 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 the the, um, uh, the leadership of uh, the, uh, the so-called Islamic State, Daesh, uh, most of the people were ex uh military commanders. And this was also very imp important to understand that this, I would characterize this organization as a um, totalitarian organization with a military dynamic, because it's not based on a popular movement, and I will explain in Mosul and others as well. It's uh, based on military domination, uh, complete um, repression uh, to impose its power, not on any kind of uh, power from below, etc. Because you had a debate at one point in two, when Mosul was taken by the Islamic State uh, that this was a popular uprising. And, uh, hopefully it didn't last too much, but uh, I will come back to, to it later. So first of all, the reason of Daesh is of the policies of Saddam Hussein. Yani, who, used also as well sectarianism, although it was a so-called nationalist, uh, 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 so -called nationalist uh, regimes. It used sectarianism, it called Shias the fifth column of Iran, uh, harsh chauvinism against Kurds, uh, I don't need to think about Halabja in 1988, etc. After, of course, we can't forget about the, um, the 10 years of sanctions that completely uh, destroyed the Iraqi social fabric and uh, destroyed the Iraqi society on many aspects. And the Iraqi and the British American invasion of Iraq in 2003 completely destroyed the Iraqi social fabric. Uh, and in the, in the luggage of the, the, the American imperialists and British imperialists, they brought back the worst reactionary uh, fundamentalist forces, be, uh, being uh, Hezb al Dawah. Uh, or uh, other reactionary or completely corrupted uh, personalities like uh, uh, Ahmed Shalabi that was... Uh, uh, okay. uh, and during the 10 years also the policies of the US was to enforce uh, a kind of sectarian political system just as li in Lebanon in Iraq. Therefore, yeah. Uh, therefore, saying that uh, it was perfect, and this is what Mehdi Amel explains well, sectarianism is used by the ruling class and the bourgeoisie to put aside any kind of social class perspective. <coughs> and it brings the popular, uh, yeah, popular classes under the rule of the, lead, uh, on the, the sectarian bourgeois leadership. And this was actually what happened mostly in Iraq. So definitely, uh, each community was defended by the bourgeois uh, conservative leader. The Sunni had to choose this uh, bourgeois conservative leader. The, uh, a lot of the, 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 the Shia popular class they had to choose um, uh, Hezb al-Dawah or everything. And this increased sectarianism uh, very much. And the US played a humongous role by repressing as well trade unionists, neoliberal policies were implemented, etc. Uh, and also, we shouldn't forget foreign interventions from uh, regional actors, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Gulf countries, uh, financing, funding uh, Islamic fundamentalist groups inside of Iraq. And they on the side, the role of Iran as well, um, uh, assisting the, the Maliki government, uh, Hezb al-Dawah government, uh, um, and, um, and you had even Hezbollah intervening inside of uh, Iraq, training some uh, Islamic Shia brigades as well, and playing a very negative role on this perspective because some of these brigades uh, did uh, sectarian crimes. Uh, and after you had, uh, I'm explaining the different reasons of the, the, uh, the arrival of uh, Daesh. 
you had the repression of 2011. Between 2011 and 2013 in Iraq, uh, you had different popular movements. Uh, and again, these movements that tr tried to create a kind of national perspective with different communities joining in was crushed through sectarianism and through Mal Maliki's repression, especially towards the Sunni minority that was not only um, repressed very severely, but was uh, nearly kicked out from any kind of state administration. Uh, there was a, a political leaders of the Sunni community were attacked uh, on the um, accusation of terrorism, etc. And between 2011 and 2013, you had popular movement inside of Iraq with national demands, democratic demands, etc. It was completely crushed by the Maliki government, accused of being terrorist. Again, uh, as soon as you're against uh, the regime, you're a terrorist. Being in Egypt, Syria, uh, Iraq, it's always the same. And the Islamic State came out of the frustrations of a section uh, of the Sunni minority, a small section, uh, uh, Daesh, actually, sorry. Al Qaeda was made in 2004, uh, and in 2010, Al Baghdadi came, became the leader of um, Al Qaeda. And they intervened in the same revolution starting through Jabhat al Nusra, which is Al Qaeda, um, in 2012. And in 2013, uh, summer, they had a break. So Jabhat al Nusra, Syria, and the Islamic State that was founded. And from this they started to expand, expand, especially after the crushing of the popular movement inside of Iraq. And they were able to capt to, to a section of the, the frustration of the Sunni minority. And this is when in, uh, in June 2014, with a coalition of different um, uh, Sunni forces, you had the Ba'as, you had tribal forces, and Islamic State, they were able to take Mosul. But why it wasn't a popular uprising, as they said? Did you see ever I mean, a popular uprising wouldn't have resulted in half a million of people qui leaving the country, uh, leaving Mosul directly. And the, the way it was imposed, it was a complete military um, uh, takeover. And actually, the, in, in the beginning, it was viewed as a liberation because the Iraqi army was considered corrupted, sectarian, and oppressing of the people of the city. But as soon as uh, Islamic State crushed the rest of the different coalition, and even uh, it became really uh, a kind of uh, hardcore uh, repressive uh, uh, thing. And this has been the case uh, wherever ISIS has expanded. <coughs> it has not been based on a popular movement from below, but on a military perspective, with harsh repression. With, uh, and as soon as uh, you have seen, especially in, in Syria, and also as well in Mosul, never uh, everyone spoke about, and one word uh, actually on the coalition that intervened in uh, summer 2014, saying because it was to protect the minorities. But when uh, Mosul fell, no one said a thing. But when uh, Islamic State was approaching Baghdad and uh, which is a government, although allied with Iran and the US, it started to intervene. And as well, when it was threatening uh, Erbil Suleimani, Barzani's uh, power inside of uh, northern Kurdistan. And this is when they intervened. It's not because, it's actually because ISIS, IS, went too far. It's not because of their reactionary ideology. And this is very important to say, it because when Al Qaeda used to exist for a while, they didn't intervene at this moment. The same in Syria. But you had popular movement from below, from different peoples, where ISIS is present, uh, demonstrating against it. For example, okay, uh, in Minbij, in Syria, you had general strike, etc. I will finish on the issue, I will finish on this, counter-revolution. Counter-revolutionary uh, counter forces, whether being authoritarian regime or Islamic fundamentalist forces, has used sectarianism to divide the people. And this is why sectarianism is not only about creating a more tolerant society, it's a class struggle as well. Sectar struggle against sectarianism is part of the class struggle. And this is very important to say. That I, cannot, uh, I agree totally. There's two aspects that the left have to focus on. the struggle against sectarianism and the women issue. Really, this is women liberation issue. These are two uh, sectors that are always attacked by authoritarian regimes and reactionary forces, constantly. 
and with, uh, in addition to the, the worker movement. So the role of the left is to create an independent democratic, and this has been the most lacking the sections of the left going in this side, the section on the this side, create an independent, large, democratic, progressive force to f face these two uh, counter-revolutions. Thank you very much.